What is up guys? Today we're going to be learning how to do a chrome and lightning effect on a trucker hat. These methods are going to be super easy so stay tuned. First things first, we're going to need to tape the hat since we'll be doing some heavy airbrushing. And during the taping process, I'm just going to make sure I have everything completely covered and secure so that we don't risk getting overspray on our white areas of the hat. Hat is completely taped up and secure. Now it's time to prep our stencils for the text that we're going to be adding our effect to. I have a regular vinyl stencil that's been pre-cut, but if you need to make a homemade stencil, you can print out your text on paper, tape it on top of vinyl, and cut out each letter with an X-Acto knife. So I actually have two identical stencils, and for both, I'm going to apply transfer tape, apply pressure, and then peel the stencils from their backing. For the first one, I'm going to peel away the entire backing, leaving only the letters on the transfer paper, and for the second, I'm going to peel out the letters only, leaving the backing on the transfer paper. Now that both are weeded, they're going to be exact opposites of each other, and you'll see why in a bit. I'm going to grab my letters only stencil and center it on the front of the hat. Once it's in place, you can begin peeling away the transfer tape while making sure the letters stay stuck in place. The stencil is going to be really handy because I want to change the color of the front panel of the hat. The best way to do that quickly and easily is to bust out our Angelus airbrush. This is going to allow us to add color to that front panel with ease. I'm going to pour some flat black into my gun and add a one-to-one -one ratio of too thin to keep the paint thin and smooth while it runs through the gun. So I use too thin to thin the paint for my airbrush, however, However, if you wanted to keep the fabric material on the hat as soft as possible, you could also use Too Soft as well since it thins out the paint and allows it to soak into the fabric to stay as soft as possible. However, if you decide to use Too Soft, don't forget to heat set it. Now I'm going to apply about 3-4 to four coats of my mixture with drying times in between to fully saturate the panel. Be sure to hold your gun at a distance to spray a mist and avoid adding too much paint to one area at a time. Our coats are added. Now when we remove our stencil, we can see that the white was preserved underneath, which is exactly exactly what we need to create our chrome effect. Now we're going to take our backing only stencil and line it up with the white letters we have in place. This is just going to keep our letters isolated during the execution of our effect. To create the chrome look, we're going to need to create the illusion of a reflection. To do this, I'm going to place a piece of painter's tape anywhere I'd like on the text. It can go in any direction, it just needs to be at some halfway point through the wording. Now that the tape is in place, we're going to need to create a gradient with our airbrush. I have an attachment on my gun that allows me to control the pressure at which the paint is being released. I would want to turn this down to the lowest point so that I get more of a mist than a spray. Another trick that will get this type of spray is the distance at which you hold the gun. The closer you hold, the more of a fine line you get. So holding at a medium distance will give you this nice mist, holding closer will give you a fine line, and holding further away will give you more of a spray. We're going to hold close but not too close to get that nice mist. Now we're going to create our gradient along the line of the painter's tape. We want the area near the tape to be the darkest and the bottom of the letters to stay somewhat white to achieve the reflection look. When the tape is removed, we can see that we're already getting a pretty chrome look going. To take the effect even further, we're just going to apply a light mist to the top of the letters as well to give them another reflection point. And once that's added, we can outline the top and sides of the letters in white to add another light source to the effect. Alright, let's move on to the lightning which is super easy. Drawing wise, the bolts are just one squiggly line that goes to the bottom of your object. Then you can draw stems coming from that line and keep adding smaller stems anywhere you'd like. The trick is just to make them squiggly and random. The more random the stems, the better. So let's take that same drawing method and apply it all over the hat. Remember that the pattern is very random, so it's almost harder to make a mistake here. And once the lines are penciled in, I'm going to grab my brush and outline all the lines with just one coat of white for now. And here's where the lightning is really going to come to life. We're going to spray that light mist again and just apply it to every stem of lightning to give it that real glow effect. I want to add a pop of color to my bolt, so I'm going to be adding a color mixture of pale blue and neon Bahama blue. And I'm gonna go in with my airbrush again and just spray one coat over the white that I previously sprayed. And then to finish off the lightning, the last thing you need to do is go back in with white and outline the stems of the lightning again. This gives it a more realistic look of light. All right, lightning is done. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is remove the tape to reveal the finished product. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you guys next time.